Happy Monday, everybody. I'm Louise from Wildflower Wool, and welcome to a brand new episode of New Start Monday Knits. This is a little bit different because it is recorded. The last year or so, I've been doing lives on Monday nights, but tonight I just had something going on. Wasn't sure if I'd be able to make it back in time, so I am recording something this afternoon. So like always we're going to talk about the yarn that you guys are voting for i don't have the actual winning um brioche or intarsia but i will pop in and do some posting on social media to let you know later tonight what the actual winner is we'll talk about last week's new start i have almost a finish and a little bit of progress on some other projects so we'll talk about that oh and I did update the whiteboard so if I remember I will show you that so this probably won't go the full hour because I won't have you guys here to chat and um, talk about the comments so I'm thinking 20 30 minutes we'll see how it goes so I pulled out some yarn from my stash for this week's project it's going to be a pillow and I thought these two colors look pretty good together this green has been in my stash for, I don't know, many, 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 many years. And well, not that, not that long because the ball band isn't that old. So this is one of the newer ones. So it hasn't been in my stash, maybe just a few years. It's deep olive. I'm not sure if this is still a current colorway or not, but it's really nice. It is um, yeah, just a dark green, green olive. Love it. Very well a very fallish color but i'm hoping it'll work for kind of a summery pillow this classic well is some yarn that one of the podcast viewers linda had sent me out around christmas time so i took a dig through it to see if i would have anything in there to go with this olive green and i thought this matched not too bad this is is an older one it is Patton's Classic Wool again, old ball band, and this colorway is uh, Wood Rose Heather. And this is one I am not sure if I ever had this color. I mean, it's kind of a pinky rosy color, not usually my go-to color, but you know, I like how these look together. I think this might be showing a little bit lighter on screen than it actually is. The colors look really nice. I did do a black and white photo test to make sure that there was good contrast between the colors and there will be. So I've got multiple balls somewhere back here on the shelf. <laughs> I've got, I think there's three balls of this and I've got two or three balls of the green. So I'm thinking we've got lots to do a pillow. What you knitters were voting for was whether I would knit this pillow as um, a brioche or entrelac. I thought my go-to is always, you know, thinking stranded, intarsia, maybe a slip stitch. And I thought, what would be a little bit different? And I immediately thought brioche and entrelac. So without thinking too much about it, that's what I posted this morning with pictures of these saying it would be a pillow. And I have no idea what the voting is going to end up at. I took a look at it um, early afternoon and there was lots of votes for both. There, <laughs> there were a couple, one or two votes that were like no votes. They were just shocked happy faces, <laughs> happy, yeah, happy face emojis, like, you know, the like, what are you talking about? The, um, a couple of people were like, definitely not brioche. Um, one, yeah, one or two people said definitely not either. <laughs> so they were definitely not a brioche or entrelac fan. Lynn, I think, voted for, she said entrelac because brioche is, you know, kind of the trendy stitch right now. She's like, I never go with the trends, so let's go with entrelac. And entrelac probably is not that popular right now, but it is very fun to knit. And I haven't done a project in entrelac in quite a while. So I don't know. I'm kind of, well, I'm happy with either one. There's, if brioche wins, I thought I could do something very simple and just get a really fun two colored pillow cover, or I could do a fancier brioche stitch. So I'm not entirely sure. So I, I have a few ideas. Entrelac, I thought I could do that in the round. I could do it flat. I could do some little entrelac squares. 
that maybe have lace in them. I don't know. There's possibilities for whatever you guys are voting for. So the yarn's just going to sit here and I will cast on either later tonight or tomorrow. So I'll put some posts on Facebook and Instagram, maybe do a quick little um, post here on YouTube as well. We'll just have to check. You'll, you'll see wherever you are on social media, you'll see, because I know everybody will just be sitting on the edge of their seat to know, is it brioche or is it entrelac? So leave me some comments down below because it seems so odd. I don't have your comments here to chat with you as we're, as I'm chatting. So leave some comments down below as you're watching the video, you know, like, did you vote? Which one is your favorite? How, which one have you, have you knit last? Was, you know, did you knit a brioche project? Um, you know, is that one of your finishes? Like I'm thinking maybe, has anybody done any entrelac anytime in the last little bit? So this is going to be fun. I'm picturing this as a pillow sitting on a bench, possibly up at the cottage, maybe on my outdoor patio. So we'll see. We will see. We'll see if it then turns up more summery or fallish. I don't know. I like the two colors. It's stash yarn. We're going to use it up into something that can be used this summer. So I will let you know. Very, very exciting. Okay, what else do I have to show you? Last week's, we might as well go talk about last week's new start. Let me set this aside. So last week, you were all voting on two skeins of sock yarn and Blue Jean Baby was the winning sock yarn. I wanted to knit it into an asymmetrical shawl. Uh, I wa I've got the ball hand wound here and I've got a little tiny start, <laughs> a little, little tiny start, just enough to say it is started. I went with larger needles again because I like, I actually like the drape of the shawl that I'm going to show you next. So these are, this, this is, I think I'm pretty sure this is a three point, yeah, 3.75 millimeter or number five US. And here I am, just a little, little start. I, every time I look at this, I think of Susanna's comment last week about how all the, the blue jean colors, the blue for the jeans, the orange for the stitching, the brown for the label, like, like all like very, very creative ideas here, Susanna. So anyway, I am, really looking forward to knitting this up. So there's a teeny weeny little start. I started with five stitches and when it's just such a tiny little number, I don't really worry about what cast on. I just do a, a long tail. Um, you could probably do a knitted cast on, you could do a cable cast on. The only cast on that I typically stay away from is the, like the loop, backwards loop cast on because I find that is very loose. And even with just five stitches, it might just be a little too loose. But any other cast on, you don't, it doesn't have to be super stretchy for this little point down here. So I just do my regular long tail and I'm doing my increases differently than I did on the shawl from a few weeks, like, well, a few weeks, maybe it's like two months ago. I am actually doing a knit front back increase on this just for a little variety, just to see if I like the edge any different. So just a, a regular standard asymmetrical boomerang shawl, all garter stitch. I had thought about doing something a little fancier, putting a little bit of lace in there, but honestly, I think the, the, the colors of the yarn, I think any pattern would just kind of get lost in here. And I truly want something simple. So next week, when I'm back next Monday, I'm hoping to have big progress on this. So we'll see. We'll see how that happens. Cause you, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see when next week comes because I'm going to have entrelac or brioche to work on. And I'd really like to have that pillow finished or, or definitely a good start. So we'll see how far I get. The shawl that I did work the most on was this one right here. 
here. This is, oh, oh, if I looked on my trusty whiteboard, I could, I could tell you when I started it. It was in March, so it was only a month ago. Was it, or was it February? No, I think it was March. It was for the Fiber Friends One Skein project, and that was just the last month. The months are starting to blur together, you guys. Anyways, I know I cast this on right at the end of the month. I had this ball of sock yarn. It was Regia. There was no color name. It was just a, a number, and I can't remember, and I don't have the ball band. And I'm partway across the row, which is, makes it, well, not, makes it a little tricky showing. Anyways, I'm almost finished. I tried really, really hard to get this done. I was hoping I could actually wear this tonight um, when you guys are watching this, but it didn't quite happen. Um, the yarn, sock yarn, Regia. It is, it's really nice yarn, really loosely plied. And if I could find the end, I'm ready to cast off. I spent a little while yesterday finishing this shawl and measuring out my yarn to see did I have did I have yarn enough to do one more row one more row one more row so I don't know I might have got down to added in an extra three or four rows and now I've got enough left here just to do a simple cast off. I'm not going to do anything fancy for the cast off. There again, as I was getting close to getting this finished. Okay, let me try to show it to you. Um, let's see. It's a really good size. So there is my cast on edge. That's the whole, let's do it this way. That's the length. So it's, it's a good size. I knit this on a larger size needle than I typically do. Usually I knit my shawls with a 3.5 millimeter for sock yarn, and this I went to 3.75 because I just wanted to see if I could stretch the size just a little bit, and I'm really, really happy with it. It's got a really nice drape. It's nice and loose, and the size is great. And yeah, we can't, let me see. I don't know why I stopped with just a few. Um, well, anyways, we'll, I'll give you a better look at it next week. Let's do that. <laughs> anyways, it turned out really good. It's almost done. I just have to cast off. That's all. I just didn't have time to do that before I came up here to film. But I love the colorway of this. I don't know if it's you can still get it it's probably long discontinued because this has been in my stash for a little while as well but I always want to think of it as a gradient but it's not quite gradient it, there is some variation in there like a variegated but it's a really neutral neutral variegated does that make sense but you can see every once in a while there's like some purple in here but it's mostly just shades of gray I really really like it think it'll be really wearable with a lot of different outfits so next week, this will count as a finish. I did not count it as a finish on my whiteboard yet because I don't have it cast off. So, and hopefully, fingers crossed, all my, my estimating. So what I did was I took the live stitches that are on the needle and the, my tiny little bit of ball of yarn, and I just kept pulling out the ball of yarn to make sure that I had at least three lengths of yarn, three times, three times the length of my knitting. If my shawl was this wide, I wanted one, two, three strands of my working yarn, so I know I would have enough yarn to knit across the row. And then I've left five widths to cast off, and I think I should be good. And I think I might have a little bit more than that, but I'm not, I'm not gonna play yarn chicken anymore. I'm just gonna cast it off and call it done. And then I will have a, a perfect shawl and if I had this actually I may just finish this later tonight because it's it was like snowflakes in the air today so you know it's we're in that spring weather where one day it's spring one day it's still winter so this would actually still be really nice to wear today with 
um, like another light sweater or jacket. So maybe I will get this. I may have a chance to wear it later on this week. So fingers crossed for a finish next week. If I don't get this finished, I don't know. You know, I got distracted by another project. So that was what I worked the bulk of this week was trying to get this done. I always had had that little ball of yarn and you know sometimes it just keeps going and going and going which is great because you want for a one skein shawl you want to get as much yardage out of that so it's really wearable but yet you also want to get finished so you can move on to something else right. The other project I worked on this weekend was my sock. I showed this Saturday on the Fiber Friends podcast <laughs> I hadn't done any more. I don't think I had done any more on it than I when I showed it to you guys last. The last time I showed you, I had the leg and I was trying to decide would I do something more exciting for the heel. You guys gave me some ideas, a strong heel, a strong heel, afterthought heel, fish lips kiss heel, you know, kind of the, there's a lot of ones out there. And um, in the end, I decided, you know what? The sock challenge is still going on. It's going on until, what are we just like a week I think one like next Sunday so I thought hmm I don't think I'm gonna get a pair of socks done but if I can get this one sock done I would be happy so that that's kind of my plan so I did the heel flap and the heel turn and I have picked up stitches all the way around for the gusset so I'm back on track here in the round so when you do the heel on your little nine inch circular, a heel flap and gusset. It's totally doable to do. It does get your heel flap gets a little wonky because you're you're just you're just knitting on half your half your stitches turning, working in rows, not in the round. Um, but it's doable. It totally works. You turn the heel. When you pick up gusset stitches, you do want to put in stitch markers to mark where your instep is that goes over the top of your foot. But then once you do that, you're good to go. You can place another marker right up in here to mark the beginning of the round. Um, <clears throat> and I will do that at some point. I'll just count to make sure I've got even number of stitches on um, gussets and then divide my little, I've got 18 stitches here for the heel turn. Divide those half and half, put a stitch marker in there and then you're good to go just work your decrease rounds and then you're clear sailing onto the foot. So I hope I get good progress on that. Maybe even get the sock done. So this yarn again is Songbird Fibers, a local dyer to us and she does beautiful beautiful yarn. This is Catbird, Grey Catbird. Yes, Grey Catbird. Really nice. I like the little flecks of red in there and these are potentially going to be a birthday present for my mom but I'm gonna to have to get knitting quick because her birthday is the middle of May um, I just realized so I don't know you guys know I'm off work right now because I'm still recovering from my broken kneecap and um, when you're not working every day or you know your, your routine gets interrupted it's really hard to know what day of the week it is and all of a sudden I realize next week is May and it's you know time flies when um, yeah, everything just seems to be out of order. So anyways, I got to get working on those. Otherwise, her birthday gift will be late. And I would like to really stop that habit of giving people hand knit things after birthdays, after Christmases. This is the year I'm getting a little bit more on track. Okay, so we've got, oh, I've got one more project that I did a little bit of work on. This is our Guild Blanket. And I'm sorry it's in a plastic bag um, sorry if there was some crinkling there I'm really trying to get caught up on this because what am I on I'm on marches marches square so I put this is this really sweet stitch marker that Linnell made me and I think I moved that last Monday after we chatted so this is what I've done in the last week so I'm thinking I did one repeat I'm not sure if I did one or two 
Where's my, oh no, 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 maybe I did do two. I think I did, I think I did two repeats. So I am getting close, one or two more. This block has to be, we're doing them 13 and a quarter inches. So I'm getting there, I'm getting close, getting close. And then I can, then I can start April. <laughs> It's only the last week of April. Just when I think I'm getting caught up, a month slips away on me again. But that's all right. That is okay. I'm having fun doing these. Okay, so there. I've only, yeah, so that's probably going to be, I'm not even worrying if I, if I do another repeat and then I only get half a repeat. That's what happened on this gray one. I'm just going by 13 and a half inches, not necessarily going by what the pattern says. I think it said to do six repeats. If I only get five and a half done, I only get five and a half done. And then I'm um, just gonna stop right where I am. Um, and that's that. Then I've got one more block to do on this strip and then I will start a brand new strip. So progress is, it's coming. There's January, that cute little butterfly. This was, this was all lace. This, this block is fantastic because it looks cabled and it's not, it is just all lace. It's like magic. And then this one here, it's definitely lace. Very fun. So this is gonna be a great whole year long project. So I'll bring you along as I work through stitch pattern repeat by stitch pattern repeat. So it may be a long painful process till I get to the end of the year, but I am bound and bent again. Uh, I'm going to get this done on time. I am not because every but guild members I think are already taking bets that I'm not going to have it done until you know into January and I'm like no I'm getting it done. I'm getting it done. So maybe this week I'll be able to work a little bit. Definitely want to get I'd like to get March done this week and not go into May still working on March. When I'm only one month behind I feel like there's still a chance of getting caught up. When I get two months behind then I really start to feel like I'm behind. Don't want that. So as long as I stay only one month behind, I'll call it on track. How's that? Okay, that I think was all that I had worked on. The sock, the blanket, the shawl I was trying to finish, the new shawl that I had just started. I did do a little bit of yarn shopping two weekends ago. Leo and Roxy um, another local yarn dyer to us. It was their birthday sale. So I went to Little Red Mitten, which is where a lot of you know, I've talked about Jolynn. She is the owner of Little Red Mitten, our local yarn shop, as well as Leo and Roxy Floss Yarn Co. Floss Co. No, thinking of stitching and Caroline. <laughs> Caroline and Cheryl and some of our friends are heading up to Stitch North this weekend. So anyways anyways yeah so much fun stuff going on I came I came home with more yarn than I thought I just pulled it all out <laughs> like there's an extra skein in here that I totally forgot that I had bought and it's kind of funny because there was another lady and I were standing in front of the Leo and Roxy sock um, the sock yarn and the Leo and Roxy basics yarn and we were talking about um, how hard it was to make a decision and I'm just like oh yeah I like I'm just I'm, I'm tired of trying to make decisions so I'm just I'm just gonna buy it all well <clears throat> apparently I did because I came home with more than I thought I was I grabbed these two colors this is raspberry yep yeah, raspberry ripple and tranquil so this one here is a Leo and Roxy sock yarn. This is a basic. So let's see, what is the difference here? So this is an 80-20 sock. So the Leo and Roxy sock yarn. 80-20 um, sock, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 439 yards, 400 meters. And that is the only one I know, that was the sock yarn. These ones here are all the basics. So I got three neutrals here. And this is what I was trying to decide between. And 
then in the end, apparently I just took them all. I was trying to see which ones I wanted to go together. Anyways, there they are. These are going to go into a shawl, just a, a neutral shawl. And this colorway here, this is Silver Streak, just a really pale yellow, or pale gray. And this one must be Overnight Oats, am I right? Yes. So this one's Overnight Oats, so more of a beige than a gray. And this one here is Pencil Point, and it is a gray, but it's a, it's a darker gray. So anyway, these are always good to have, and to be honest, I probably have some of these already in my stash, which um, I'm not going to be, I'd actually be happy if I did, because then if I wanted to make a larger shawl, I could just add in, it's always good to have an extra skein of every color, right? So you won't run short. So those were my five skeins that I bought at the Leo and Roxy. They're in sale. So these ones here might actually end up being another little baby sweater for Scarlet. Might do like maybe the gray and the raspberry or gray and the teal. We'll see. It's good to have a stash. Then you can mix and match. The, oh, the other thing that I bought while I was there, <clears throat> and I thought I would just try this out, is one of these sock rulers. I've actually been looking for one to get a nice wooden one, and I haven't been able to find one. Either they're sold out, or there's different ones, and I just haven't been able to find the one I was looking for. Anyways, this happened to be sitting in a basket with sock yarn, and I thought, okay, I will just get this one, and... I will try it out. So do you guys use these? Is it something that uh, that you use all the time? I don't know. Maybe if it's something that I end up thinking that I like, maybe I will end up getting another one. But um, so so this so you can use these right for toe up, toe up and cuff down, right? So I'm gonna see. Maybe I'll stick this in with my my sock knitting. I'll tuck it in my bag and I'll give it a try and we'll see what we think. So that I think is it. No, it's not. I bought two more balls of yarn while I was at Little Red Mitten. These are for Scarlet for another little baby sweater. She has outgrown her preemie sweater, which is very, very exciting. So I got more of the Anchor Bay. I got this yarn in the, <laughs> it was a, more of a lilac. This is purple. It was more of a pinky, pinky lilac -y color. Um, yeah, I didn't go too far. I didn't go too wild and crazy on the colorway, did I? I actually looked at a red and then I put it back and I picked up this purple. So yeah, so she's needing some larger baby sweaters. So this is what I'm going to get because my daughter actually asked me to knit her another sweater. So this is what, this is the yarn I picked up while I was there. It knit up so nice, the first little, that was the baby vertebrae that I did. So Anita really liked the little wrap cardigan that I made her, so I think I will do another one out of this. And I think that is pretty much all I've got to share with you. Now we could talk for a second pillow forms for this week's project. I've got a couple pillow forms that I could use. I do have a square one, and I also have this oblong one, which I think would be really fun to need a pillow cover for as well. So I haven't decided yet. I'm going to just leave this one out. Maybe tonight when I find out what I am knitting, one will just speak to me. And we'll see whether I go square or I go oblong. Either way, it'll be fun. We're going to knit up both of them probably over the spring and summertime anyway. So they will both get used. So I think that is it for this week's podcast. So I will be back live again next Monday. Leave some comments down below what you're knitting. Are you close to a finish? And I will just chat with you in the comments. 
and I will be sure to let you know what I am knitting this week. So I'll let you know if you happen to be on the winning vote or not. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful knitting week and I will chat to you soon. Happy knitting!